Hi guys, how are you today? And I'm just gonna tell you guys about uh, my previous experience on my acute placement. So I just finished placement for um, two weeks. So actually that's a chronic um, placement. But before that was acute placement, which is four weeks. So we will talk about acute and chronic placement together. So chronic is more like long-term diseases like diabetes, um, heart failure, COPDs and everything. But in acute, it's like short-term ones. So previously, I was assigned in a surgical ward in the acute placement. And then in the chronic one is for two weeks, um, I was assigned in, in the acute wards. As an online nursing student, um, we still go through some some placement so with me I've finished my acute placement for four weeks and then this time um, last two weeks um, two weeks ago I finished my chronic placement so that's six weeks placement done I still have 11 weeks of placement more to go so I'm doing a subject this month for three months that's a session one so I'm doing two subjects which is one of that is managing deteriorating patient and that has four weeks of um, placement but that one will be on uh, maybe july june july time so i still have placement um, after that one but anyway guys i will talk to you about my experience during my acute and chronic placement in the ward because i've done my placement in the ward so these are just um, gives you an idea if you are a nursing student out there that's going to have a placement soon in acute ward or um, in acute placement so this is the video that suits you because this is all, all based on my experience so anyway guys let's start if you're um, enrolled as an online nursing student they will allocate you anywhere they want but you can um put in your preference um to places which is only nearby but usually with my previous one they didn't give me a choice so they just put me in that place um which is good because it's not too far away but last time before the pandemic started um they assigned me to hay and that was like five hours from here and then it was cancelled because of the pandemic so I was glad that it was cancelled because it's like five hours drive and I have to pay for my accommodation like for four weeks and that's a lot of money. Um, acute ward placement. So this is what you're going to expect. Um, disclaimer, it will only depends on the facility that you're going to be in with. There are some facilities that has only fewer beds like the previous one I have for two weeks has only 16 beds and they're not really full at the moment so there's only like maybe eight patients in a day uh, six patients so you got three each so usually the maximum is one to seven but yeah so one to seven but then that's the maximum amount and there's two nurses in there working so they have to divide the patient so they have equal patient ratio so if you're going to acute ward you will have an orientation on the first day it usually starts at eight o'clock but usually it's um, eight hours per day the whole duration of your placement so in the first day you will have your orientation you will have to ask about the documentations that you needed to present um, this will include the police check, um, working with children's check, your immunization records, um, hand hygiene. Yeah, so those are the main, the main documents that they needed um, before, before, usually four weeks before placement, they will ask for it. But you can bring it with you just to show them that you got all the documentations needed. So first day orientation. And then the second day you will um, start your shift either they will put you in the morning or in the afternoon usually the morning shift starts at 7 o'clock until half past 3 and then the afternoon well depends on your facility but usually the, um, it starts 1 30 until 10 or half past 2 until 11 so it will depend on the hospital that you're gonna have your placement so on the second day 
you will be assigned to have a preceptor or a body nurse but usually if the facility has a lot of RNs you will be assigned to an RN as a body or, or an EN as a body but the, the disadvantage of having an EN body is that you cannot give medications you will only have to observe um, and you cannot give any medication if you are budding with an EN because um, that's the regulation of the Af Af AFRA. So if you are with an RN, the RN can supervise you to give and prepare IV medications, give it to the patient, and then you will just sign there in the drug chart and the RN will co-sign on top of your signature. So that's how our uni's um, regulations are or yeah you will have to have an rn to supervise you in everything that you do so you will get you you will get your skills ticked while doing your acute placement you will have the chance to administer iv medications prepare iv medications you will have to have the chance to um, administer iv therapy um, dress a wound, assess and dress a wound, um, do an admission, do a progress note, but yeah, the, the RN should co-sign everything that you are doing. Sometimes you get a chance to do a blood transfusion, so anything, any opportunity that comes your way, grab it because that's the only time that you're going to learn um, in a hospital base, not not just on a mannequin so that is your chance to like really practice your skills that you learn from the lab so you're dealing now with real human beings so grab that chance anyway you don't have to worry because there's an RN that will teach you and guide you on what you have to do so blood transfusion wound dressing iv medications and usually if you get lucky if you get assigned in a big hospital you will have the chance to um, insert a catheter insert an ngt um, catheter management and all those skills that you need to learn you can learn that if you if there's any cases in the ward but um, yeah just be proactive um, always ask questions and be be a sponge like absorb everything that what you see learn and just keep asking questions so in the two weeks or four weeks you will have a clinical educator with you like he or she will meet you halfway during the placement for brief debriefing so he will ask you if how you going how's your how's your emotional and psychological well-being while you're in the ward are you coping so they will constantly um, follow up and um, ask for feedbacks from the preceptors uh, that you are buddying with and then from there they will assess you they will they will get that feedback and that's where they base their um, comments like we have a book uh, our placement book that's where the, the clinical educator will give feedback on our um, skills if we are um, not not really the clinical educator will give us feedback using the book so there's some standards there that they have to base on in order for them to give feedback and then after the two weeks placement after the book has been filled I actually have mine there I actually sent it yesterday to the uni so after they filled all the feedback forms um, our school we will have to send it um, um, scan it and send it through our own um, student portal so we have to send it as an assessment so after we send it they will um, send us a feedback maybe two weeks later they'll send us a feedback and that is subject done and then you will get a grade after that so and also you will also learn in the ward you will also learn how to do progress notes documentation and everything so you will be given a chance to document and do a progress notes and then yeah always co-sign with an RN and always um, let the RN double check of what you're doing um, yeah so that is 
pretty much really what's happening in the ward during my placement so I've spent two weeks already in the acute ward for my chronic placement four weeks was a cute for my acute care placement that one was really interesting because i was in a like a tertiary hospital and i was assigned in a surgical ward so there's a lot of opportunities of learning in the surgical ward because um in there i had a chance to observe and monitor a patient with a tpn and a patient with cci which is the continuous catheter irrigation um, post-op patients um, also palliative there's all, also a mix of palliative patients so you will encounter all of those things um, so it will really give you a very good experience before you maybe before you finished anyway but yeah at least that four weeks is a long time for you to grab and learn more skills that has been taught in the world I find it really useful because it's like the learning opportunities that you get face to face with a patient not just with the mannequin so I find placement really good yeah I really like I'm um, doing my placement apart from not getting paid but anyway once you get all your placements done it's just such an accomplishment so so guys if you have any questions or if you are nervous about your upcoming placement don't be because um, it's a good experience um, it's not really scary because there's an RN that will help you and then the staff in the hospital um, they're always there to help students they always there to guide the students to learn so but it also depends on the hospi hospital that you're gonna be assigned with but based on my experience the staff are really good with students they will let really let you learn and hands-on and let you do things because that's what that's how we learn so just be proactive uh, ask if you can if you can do this procedure with just with his or her supervision um yeah just just ask if you can do that and this but mostly also we always um, as a student it's usually we always like um, do some obs first obs just a normal basic ward um, jobs like first thing in the morning you do some planner and then at least it gives you more a bit organized of your of your shift you do some planner and then you do the obs and then um, you will be giving meds and then hygiene and then follow up with the doctors if any changes and then just um, after that documentation and progress notes and everything so that's about it really you, what you can expect in an acute ward but more the patients are more um, sick the more the, the, the patients are more sick and yeah needs more attention so yeah if you have any questions guys about your upcoming acute placement feel free to put a comment down below i'll try my best to answer your questions and if you haven't subscribed please do so and thank you so much guys i hope you learned something from this video and i'll see you again on my next one bye take care good luck if you're having a placement coming soon bye